Hey, what's going on, people? You know who this is, and you know where you are. So let's jump right into this one with a look at the black sheep of the Golden Axe franchise, the Master System exclusive Golden Axe Warrior. Now, I won't lie to you folks, when I first came across this curious Zelda-esque RPG back in the early 90s, I just assumed, as I imagine many others did, the Sega were pulling another Alex Kidd in high-tech world on us, where they simply dredged up a little-known Japanese-only release, altered a few pixels here and there, and slapped the Golden Axe brand on it. But no, this is a legit entry in the franchise. Despite its corny and generic box art, and a high-profile axe battler starring role-playing game on the Game Gear. So we've established the lineage of the game, how does it play? Well, I mentioned it was Zelda-esque. Let me retract that statement. It is bloody Zelda. But before you think I'm getting ready to chastise this game for its heresy in trying to rip off RPG royalty, I think it's important to step back in time and survey the Master System scene of the early 90s and examine closely why Sega made the bold step of releasing a very Japanese style RPG at a time when nobody cared for the genre. And with the 16-bit Super Nintendo and Sega's own Mega Drive dominating the talk in the playgrounds. Released in the US and Europe in 1991, the Master System having been put out of its misery in Japan in 89 with the Mega Drive's arrival, Golden Axe Warrior quickly found itself relegated further, with the US dropping the system by the end of the year. So what was Europe's response to the title at the time? I mean, it's well known that Europe, and the UK in particular, embraced the Master System with open arms, so much so that the NES never really found a foothold on these shores. Well, the simple answer is... meh. I remember reading reviews in magazines which all said it was a baby's first adventure game, and you should buy Fantasy Star instead. It wouldn't be until about 1995 that I actually managed to get hold of a copy and try it for the first time, and I found myself loving it. It's not perfect, far from it, but I played it obsessively. The fact that there was an RPG of this calibre on the Master System, yet the machine to this day is thought of as having a barren RPG library, is a sad state of affairs. The Golden Axe in the name clearly didn't help things, as most kids who thought of Sega's seminal hack and slash arcade game conjured visions of fantastic graphics, music and action. Three elements sadly lacking in this 8-bit adventure that's not exactly going to make Link green with envy. But what it does offer is a quality RPG in the tried and trusted Zelda style. And while it lacks the sparkle of more well-known Zelda games like Link to the Past or even Link's Awakening, it's a familiar feeling adventure with enough quirks and references to keep you coming back for more. And despite the lack of attention afforded it in retro fan circles, I was pleasantly surprised by its inclusion as an unlockable in the Sega Mega Drive collection back on the Xbox 360 and PS3. So if Zelda or classic RPGs in general hold any interest for you, I strongly recommend Golden Axe Warrior, as a fun, no frills adventure that's long been overdue a rediscovery. So my name's Grey, thank you for joining me on my reminiscings and musings of a little known but worthy Sega game from their pomp. I've got more videos in the pipeline, so stay tuned for more retro related gaming goodness coming your way soon. So thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.